speech language pathologist and owner and operator of Speech, Language, and Beyond. I'm coming to you today to discuss with you when is it the appropriate time to, te to teach letters and numbers to your children. Now specifically, I am talking about those children who it has been identified that they have a speech delay or that you are thinking that your child is showing signs of a speech delay. What do I mean by speech delay? Either your child has a really low receptive vocabulary, they are unable to identify common objects or actions on command by pointing or touching, or if you give it to them in a simple direction, that they aren't able to carry out that instruction on command because they don't understand the vocabulary. Then it's also, they may have a receptive vocabulary, but they're unable to express that vocabulary to you. So that results into them having less than 10 words, not combining words to form sentences, not using words to make requests, um, to name objects, just basic form of communication. And the reason why I decided to do this subject is because when I have parents of children that come in that have a speech delay and we have an open discussion in order for me to understand what their concern is for their child or what their child may, may not be doing, because that child is in that developmental stage where they need to be learning letters and numbers so that they can be prepared for school, those are the things that these parents are trying to teach and are becoming frustrated even though that child's vocabulary is really low and they're not saying a lot of they may not be able to understand a lot we still have those parents that are trying to teach the skills of numbers and letters and shapes and colors now i'm not necessarily saying that that is wrong because that is the appropriate time to teach those types of skills because they are preschool skills so by the time your child is in a preschool program and by the time they are in kindergarten in those very early grades they are expected to know that information but this is my little strategy or tip that i give to my parents of children that have a low vocabulary unless your child is actually actually has a vocabulary of 20 words or more they are combining at least two words to form a sentence then learning letters and numbers is not going to be their priority because and at the end of the day your child may even be able to give that information back to you but like i tell all of my parents letters numbers and shapes and colors they that's rote information what i mean by rote is you can say your letters and not understand that letters come together to form words words come together to form sentences and we either speak these things or we read them in a document in a book or on a piece of paper or even on a picture card okay or you can teach your child to show you um, colors when they see them, but do they have the understanding that colors are a type of description word that they can use to describe how, how something looks? So it's very rote information that anybody can learn and spit that out to you, but do they have the functionality to understand what it means? So that, and that's kind of like a two headed type of thing so the first part of that is what i suggest is that unless your child is able to identify common objects identify actions trying to put an object and an action together in a sentence to form a word letters and numbers are not going to be your concern you're going to make sure that your child is able to understand what you say respond to when their name is called, learning those objects, learning those actions. And once your child is able to do that, then it's building up on their understanding of being able to add letters and numbers. So once your child gets past that stage, then you can introduce it. Now, because we know that the child is showing signs of having a speech delay, you want to make sure that any language that they, that they learn, that that language is functional. It's functional, meaning that if you, when you get to the point that you start teaching letters and numbers, you don't only want them to learn that this is the letter A, but you want to be able to teach that A sounds like A, as such as you would hear in apple or in 
alligator. See what I'm saying? So it's like once you teach that this is A, then take it a step further and say A sounds like A, such as in A. Bowl. So they can understand that it's a letter that has a sound that comes together to create words, okay? You also, and just some other cards that we have, and what I like about these cards is that they have B where they give it to you in uppercase and lowercase. So you say this is B. B sounds like B as such as in the word bird. And then they have another card that reiterates the fact that B looks different when it is in lowercase form because the capital B and the lower B looks different and they still give it to them in such as in the word ball, b -b ball. And then once you go through that and you do that with letters and numbers, then you can still go back and work on those identifying skills by saying, okay, where is, which one is A, and they can point it out to you. You ask them, what does A sound like? Ah, ah, ah. As such in what word? Apple, ah, ah, ah. You can take it a step further and say, here is apple, here is bird. Which one has the b, b, b sound at the beginning? Bird or apple, okay? So, like I said before, if you're going to teach letters and numbers, you do not want to teach them, try to attempt to teach them if the child does not have a strong receptive and a strong expressive vocabulary. You only want to do it once you know that they are able to understand what you say and they have words to communicate with you that they understand what you say. Once you teach it, because you know that child does have a speech delay, teach it in a way that is functional. When we work on letters in the way that I just showed you, we're working on a number of skills. You're still working on identifying, but having them show you the different um, the different um, letters as you call them out. You're working on them naming this is A, this is B, this is Apple, this is Bird. You're working on sound discrimination by saying which one has the A sound, which one has the B sound. They get to see the A in the word to realize that it can blend together with other sounds to create a word. So you're still working on it in a way that's functional and that's going to get them ahead and making sure that you're closing up that gap of that speech delay so that their language can become age appropriate by the time they start school. So another one that I can show you here is on this puzzle that I've shown you before where you have the letters, excuse me, where you have the shapes and the colors, the same thing here. So you can teach this is green. Okay, this is yellow. And once you've gone through and you've, do, you've done that, you can lay this puzzle in front of them. Show me yellow, show me green, show me circle, show me square. And then you're gonna take it a step further. Okay, look around the room. Can you find something else that's green? And have them point to it. Okay, look around the room. Do you see something that is made like a square? So you want to make sure for your children that have speech and language delays that when you teach letters, and you teach numbers that is functional for them, that is closing up the gap, and you do not want to teach them before your child has a receptive or expressive vocabulary. Make that your main focus first before you try and teach it. So I hope that you find this video useful. And I will say now for children that are typically developing, if your child is on the right track and they are naming objects, they're naming actions, they can follow um, multi-step commands, they can answer simple WH questions, then you can proceed with teaching them these skills as they show you that they're ready. But I find a lot of times that when my children don't have any words and they don't have an understanding of language at all, the parents are still trying to teach them that information and it doesn't have the same meaning if they're not yet able to use language, understand language, and apply language. So I find that my parents are really frustrated or they find that their children, they feel like they're never going to learn this. It's because they're not ready to learn this. And when you do teach it to them, you just can't teach it to them by saying this is green and not telling them that there are different things around you that can also be green or that green can come in different shape, in, in different shades or that shapes are just not shapes that you see in a puzzle, but a clock is round. The eye of the stove is round. A ball is round, letting them know how shapes apply to their real life 
uh, situation so that you're continuing to close that gap for that, spe that speech and language delay so that they can have that age appropriate language once they begin to start school. So like I said, I hope that this video helps. I do realize that I have repeated uh, things more than one time in the same way only because I want you to be able to understand if you have any further questions or concerns.